So the last thing we did was we got the chain mounted and this thing officially as a roller with all the parts we were gonna use uh, as far as the chassis is concerned. So the next thing that we were gonna do is start to mock stuff up to get the fender mounted, the sissy bar and all that stuff. Well, uh, off camera we had the sissy bar on here with the fender that we were gonna use and with the old tire that we had, we realized that it wasn't gonna fit exactly with the other things because the sissy bar uh, was actually meant for a 16 inch rear wheel. So we swapped out the tire to something a little bit smaller because this thing's uh, 4.5 and the Avon's a four. So uh, I got rid of this thing and we're gonna go with the Avon. It's something you don't want. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Saturday Sportster. Hey, so welcome back to Saturday Sportster. Uh, clearly things have changed. We're in a new location and uh, sadly this bike has stayed the same this whole time. So we're gonna change that. So since the last episode, we left off, we had that little tire mishap. The, uh, the first tire that we started with was a little too big for the uh, fender that we were gonna use. So we swapped the tire and we're gonna show you now how to mount the fender. First things first, we're gonna have, uh, gonna mount a spacer on the top of the tire to give you clearance uh, for the fender. And we're gonna be using uh, some half inch heater hose and we're just gonna tape it to the tire. So before we start mounting the fender, we're gonna check that the wheel is straight and uh, in line with everything else in the frame, just so that when you mount the fender, that uh, it's not wonky or crooked to each other because there won't be any adjustment in it once the fender is mounted on the frame. The first thing that we're gonna do is uh, just check the chain alignment. And so as you can see, I have the chain set up a little tight because once you start riding this with a brand new chain, the chain's gonna stretch out uh, basic, like pretty much right away. So I set it up just a little tight so that when I mount the fender, once it stretches out a little bit, it uh, won't be loose right away. You don't wanna set it up uh, super loose. You also wanna make sure that the wheel isn't cocked one way or the other. And uh, being on a rigid frame, a good way to measure that your axle is straight is uh, finding a spot that's on both sides of the frames that you can measure from the center of one point to the center of your axle. I recommend measuring from this shock mount because it's the same on both sides and you can measure from this to the axle on both sides and make sure it's the same and then it'll be straight in the frame. You gotta keep in mind that the tension that I have on this chain is only for mock-up and I would never ride my motorcycle down the street with the chain that tight. You'll blow up your transmission. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. This is just for when you build the bike. So if you're having trouble finding the center of your axle, uh, you can always, uh, with your calipers, measure the outside diameter of the hex and this one is inch and a quarter. And then you just subtract that by two to find the half. And so that'll be five eighths. And you can bring it down to five eighths and lock it down and then just scribe the center in two places and you'll be able to find the center. And that works on both sides. And then you can get it really precise just to be confident that your wheel is straight to the rest of the motorcycle. So now that we're confident that the wheels are uh, centered in the frame, the chain is uh, tensioned properly, we're gonna get started on mounting the fender. And first thing we got to uh, add a spacer to the top of the tire. There's a lot of different ways to do this. I've seen people use chain or different things to space the fender off of the tire when you mount it. It's really important to do this because you have to have clearance when the fender's on there for the tire to go round and round. Also, on the highway and the tire gets hot, it does expand. So uh, it will get larger. So you have to make sure that you have ample clearance. I'm using a half inch heater hose that I just got from like the auto parts store. Typically like to use this just because um, different fenders have different radiuses. Also the tires are different heights. So sometimes you have to get a couple of these. I have a half inch one, I have a five eighths. Uh, just different sizes so that when you space the tire off, one, you have ample clearance, two, that the edge of the fender looks nice to the edge of the uh, rim and also just isn't 
Just that the radiuses match up and it just, uh, the aesthetics look good from the side. I do like to try with a bunch of different hoses, but I kind of already figured out that we're gonna run this uh, half inch heater hose. We're just gonna tape this onto the side uh, through the rim, just so it stays in place while we mount the fender. So I'm just gonna throw some pieces of tape on here real quick. So I got my spacer taped down to the tire, and just before we're moving forward, I wanted to reiterate that to make sure to tighten up your axle and your axle adjusters, just so nothing moves after you check that the wheel is square, because there won't be any turning back once this fender is mounted on here. So now that we got everything, all that done, we're going to put the fender on and get this in line. And when you're putting it on the uh, on the tire, I like when it kind of when you kind of have to force it on, because then it it acts as a bit of a fixture when you're putting this on the wheel. It's nice if it goes on nice and tight so it can't wobble around. There we go. So for this project, we're running the Lowbrock Customs Manta Ray Fender. It's a four and three quarter width, which I think looks great on this Avon 18 inch vintage tire. And so when you put this on the tire, we're going to kind of just step back and visualize where we want it to be in like the roll on the tire. And then after that, we're going to be able to lower the jack down and it'll stay in place and kind of hold itself on the bike. So we gotta make sure that the fender, uh, that we didn't roll it too far forward, too far back. It's in a good spot with all the parts that we're gonna use. So as you can see, I put the seat we're gonna run and uh, lightly put it in the place that it's gonna end up in. And you might also wanna uh, throw up the sissy bar that you're gonna have and just kinda mock it up front to back at say the angle you're gonna mount it to, just to make sure that you're gonna have enough fender on the end so you don't like run into a little bit of shortage because once it's on there, it's on there. And you want to also make sure that say if you're going to have your license plate and tail light on the end of the sissy bar, that that's all going to fit and uh, there's still going to be a little fender clearance on the end. And then so once you kind of figure out where you're going to end up with the fender, because you don't have to do it like how I have it on here, it's all personal preference. Once you have that on in the spot that you like it, I suggest putting some marks just in case uh, you need to take this off. So sometimes I mark it just uh, around this, this frame tube and then maybe it might be nice to just like mark where the chain is because those things aren't gonna move. So like, just so you have like a pretty rough idea, say if you have to take this on and off a couple times, you know where it's gonna land. So then after that, you're just gonna get your, say get these parts out of the way and then we're gonna work on actually mounting it. I like to start in the middle and then uh, work my way back. So we're gonna start with uh, the mid mount. So now that we have the fender where it's gonna go in relation to the rest of the bike, we gotta make sure that it's centered on the tire before we actually start mounting in the middle. So what we're gonna do is just visually look from the back and then you see the gaps on either side from the edge of the fender to the sidewall on the tire and you're just going to slightly manipulate the fender so that the gaps are even when you look from the back of the motorcycle. The gaps I'm looking for are the edge of the fender to the edge of the sidewall of the tire. And you're just going to look down on both sides and make that even all the way down. The more time you take to make sure that uh, everything is centered and just straight on your bike before you start mounting stuff, the easier your overall project's gonna be. You don't, you don't wanna have to fight with this stuff after it's all been tacked and welded together. 
So we got the fender on there and we got it pretty straight uh, in relation to the tire. And you're gonna wanna do that basically uh, between each step because we're gonna mount it in the middle, we're gonna mount it in the rear, and then we're gonna also mount it low. So each time you just wanna uh, make sure before, it's, before you get too far and you realize that you've mounted a fender really crooked on your bike. So just make sure to keep checking that because this fender fits really tight on this tire. So you don't have a lot of play if you're gonna try to straighten out and center your tire and your fender later. We're gonna mount it in the middle first and we're gonna be using one of these tabs from Obrock Customs. So the, uh, the tab that I'm holding is uh, for a flat fender. See how there's no bends in it and it'll fit flat on uh, the top of the fender. So I'm showing you this one just to show you how long this tab is originally, because you're gonna mount it uh, underneath this crossbar and you're just gonna cut off the excess that you don't need. I already have uh, the one I'm going to use and uh, it's pre-cut, I just wanted to show you what it originally looks like. This one has a couple bends in it because it fits nicely on the curved fender. And also if you run a rib fender, it gives you some space in between for the rib to go so you don't have to like flatten out your fender or cut it up or anything like that. And the, bend, the one with the two bends in it comes with these bungs that you then will just weld to the top of your fender. So when you're mounting this curved tab, you're gonna just bolt the bungs onto the bottom of the tab and you're gonna hold it up. And I would just take a Sharpie and trace it across the cross tube and then cut off the excess and uh, then keep the bungs bolted to it. And you're just going to hold it up with the bungs touching the fender and the uh, bent part of the tab uh, on the bottom of the cross member. When you're putting this on the fender, you just want to uh, just kind of center it on the fender. An easy way to make sure that it's centered is just to try to match the gaps the best you can from the bungs to the top of the fender. So like I said before, I like to get the bracket just kind of centered on the fender where it visually looks square in between, lining up the gaps the best I can. Just be careful. Once you get it tacked on, I would still just look around. It's hard not to bump this fender around while you're working on it. Just check your gaps as you're going. And it still looks good, so. Since this is the first thing I'm welding on here, every time I'm putting a little bit of a tack, I'm gonna look at everything because when the tack seals up, when it cools down, it's gonna pull uh, just that tiniest bit and it might shift things around. So as you're going, just be aware of that. I would tack this on here so everything gets held in nice, but I wouldn't fully weld it just yet. Just make it so it's, uh, it's not gonna go really anywhere. Okay, you got that mounted in the middle. I would just inspect this before you move on. Still looks good. It'll be a little bit easier to bend and twist things in areas now that you uh, you got it tacked in the middle. So now that we have the fender mounted in the mid location, we're gonna work on mounting it in the rear and we're going to be mounting it with a sissy bar that'll act as the rear support or strut for the rear portion of the fender. We're gonna be using this gas box style sissy bar, which is the uh, chopper style DIY kit. It comes with this style sissy bar and a couple tabs and bungs to mount it to your frame 
and mount from the sissy bar to your fender so that the sissy bar is removable. A couple of the tabs are really cool because they can actually bolt on to the low part of your frame and then act as a fixture so you can kind of mock things up and get it where you want it to go without having to actually cut or weld anything yet. So we're gonna start bolting this together. We're gonna start with bolting it on the low part of your axle plate. And this hole's a little bigger on the tab, so I like to use these countersunk bolts because it centers the tab over the hole in the axle plate. And you can use that trick, I think I've mentioned it before, in any place where you're bolting something on, I like to use these just so that the holes are centered and in line when you go to just put a regular fastener in. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to line this up and get it kind of close as far as the angle I want it to be. Then you're gonna set your sissy bar up. And it'll kind of just move to where you want it to go and you're gonna have to stand back and look at everything and make sure it's in the right angle. I've mentioned this before. It's good to keep other parts that you're gonna use handy because you don't wanna make your sissy bar at too steep of an angle or in a spot where now your seat's not gonna fit. And you also gotta think we're gonna mount this seat in the back with a tab, so you're gonna have to be able to get to your hardware. And I think we're also gonna try to manipulate the seat back a little bit to get it to fit uh, just a little bit better with the seat springs. But so you don't wanna trip over yourself and not give yourself enough room to fit fasteners and everything. So just keep all your stuff handy to make sure that you got enough room when you finish mounting some things. Take that forward just a hair and stand back and take a look at everything. I think that looks pretty good. Just a slight kickback. And like I said before, I like to just kind of mark stuff just to, this isn't an exact mark, but just to give you an idea, just so you know that things didn't move around on you. All right. So the gas box kit comes with a couple other tabs and bungs that I showed you before. And so you're gonna bolt these tabs to the bungs that are provided in your kit. And those will actually weld from the fender to the sissy bar. You're gonna weld the tab to the sissy bar and then a bung to the fender. Uh, you can use this kit any way you like, but that's the suggested way for you to use it. So I got it bolted up in the lower spot of the sissy bar and I'm gonna work on getting the uh, top part of the sissy bar mounted. The kit comes with two half inch bungs, but since we're running a four and three quarter fender, it's a little skinnier than the reach on the bung from the fender to the sissy bar. So instead of actually manipulating the sissy bar to make it skinnier to fit the fender, I'm just going to change out the bungs to longer bungs. These are one inch bungs that have the same outside dimension and take the same threads that you can also purchase at lowbrowcustoms.com. They're 5 16 18, three quarter OD by one inch long bungs. They come in packs of four and they help space out the tab long enough to center it into the sissy bar. So we're going to set those on here. And I also should mention that since the bung is machined flat and square, we're going to grind it just a little bit to match the curve of the fender. I've done it on one and just a little bit ground it to just match the fender a little. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna weld it and I'll be able to show you the difference between the curve that's ground into this bung versus this flat one, which if you wanted to fill the gap would be okay, but it would be better if you try to close the gaps as much as possible. So just lining these things up, you can tell from one bung to the other that there's just a little bit more gap on one side. You can really weld that up just fine. It, the thing where it's gonna help you is when you slightly tack it, you can actually fusion tack one of the bungs where it's touching and then it won't pull as much. But if you have to actually try to tack it where the gap is, it's gonna pull a lot. And anytime you have large gaps, when you fill those gaps, that's where you're gonna get the most distortion. So if you can get these to grind out and actually fit a lot nicer than just using the bung straight out of the box, 
that would be much better when you go to weld it up. So now that we have the bungs and the tabs and everything, and it all seems like it's gonna work, I'm actually gonna tack it in the low spot and we're gonna work our way around this thing, getting it all lined up. When I use these tabs and tack the sissy bar on, I just kind of put the, the sissy bar in the center of the tab and just trust the angle of the tab they are pretty figured out, so they should just go right on and line up to where you want to be. Like I said before, make sure that your fender's nice and square. When you're working around this thing, it's easy to bump into it and Move it around just a little bit. Oh yeah, I gotta grind the other one. Test check this out though. When I put the tabs and the bungs on the fender, I don't really mind wherever the bung's pointing, but I like to keep the tabs parallel to the rod of the sissy bar. I'm gonna get that with this one. This one's a little. All right, how's it looking on the back? That looks okay. All right, not gonna match this one. All right, now that it's pretty close, I'm gonna tack one side and then make the other side match. When I'm doing stuff like this, I like to try to find, uh, say, a datum line. And so I'm going off of the bottom edge of the fender and I'm making the bung flush with that bottom edge. It'll make it really easy to match the bung on the other side because then I just need to make it flush with that edge. And like I said before, I'm trying to make this tab parallel to the to the actual sissy bar. Something's gone. One of these are pinching in. I'm just gonna straighten it out of here. The width still looks good. It's good to keep uh, adjusting everything as you're going. This is gonna get harder to fit up or move around once the more tax you get on everything, but it's still still can move around pretty easy. And I'm just kind of tweaking stuff and moving stuff around and tacking and just making sure this is still remains square as I go.
right, so everything turned out okay. We kept our gaps the same on all the sides when I was working on this. I went around and tacked everything on all the corners and just so everything would stay in the same spot and wouldn't be able to move around. But I usually like to wait till the end when I got more of the motorcycle built before I like to weld everything up. Just in case you wanna make any slight modifications, it's much easier to change things now before it's all fully welded. So I just like to leave it partially tacked for now, just strong enough so it's not gonna break on you while you're moving this thing around. So now that we have the sissy bar tacked on and we have it tacked in the middle location, we can take this hose off of here and like set it on the ground and start to plan the lower mount. So now we're mounted in the rear, we're all tacked up with the sissy bar. We're gonna work on mounting it at the bottom. So I already removed the hose off the tire because there's really nothing, nowhere for this to go anymore. And we have to weld in the middle of the fender. And if you had the hose on there, it, you would burn it. So I got rid of that and we're gonna work on mounting it underneath. So as you can see at the lower part of the frame, there's a pretty large gap between this cross member and the top of the fender, which could make it difficult to mount the fender on the low side. And maybe you might think that it looks cool with having this gap or just being minimal, but you really should have some support uh, hanging down the fender this much. You don't wanna leave this much material just loose in the air. And you definitely don't wanna cut it short because you, it'll keep your motor clean if you have this nice guard going all the way down to the bottom of your frame. I've seen lots of people cut them high and then their motor's real dirty. It, but it's, it's just gonna benefit you greatly by having this fender totally skirted all the way down. But if you find it difficult to make something from the bottom of the frame to the top of the fender, Lowbrow makes it easy with this bracket that should bolt directly to later frames, but early frames didn't have holes on this cross member. So we're gonna show you how to drill those, but the later frames, if you have one of those, this will bolt directly on and then it's slotted so it'll fit with 18s and 16 inch wheels. And you even have a little bit of play with how long the bung is in case you uh, wanna do something a little different. So this should be a pretty easy bracket for you to use to mount your fender in the low spot. So I'm gonna start with showing you how to drill the holes. First thing we're gonna have to do is get some things out of the way. So let's do that now. So we're gonna lay out the holes on the bottom mount. I like to use uh, just a Sharpie instead of Dicom or Machinist layout fluid. Uh, you can get this just at like office, any office supply store. But you just rub that on the part and that'll make your, whatever you lay out, any kind of lines that you scribe on your part a lot easier to see. So the holes in this plate are an inch and a half apart if you ever wanna figure out the center to center on some holes, especially if they're the same size, it's really easy. So an easy way to measure how far apart these holes are so you can mark a center punch on that bottom plate is you can take your scale and measure from this edge to the corresponding edge on the next hole because then it's actually a hard measurement. You have a nice uh, crisp line to go off of to figure out the placement from one hole to the next because if you try to just eyeball from the center of the center, sometimes you can get it pretty close, but you're just kind of floating out in this space. But if you move it over, it doesn't matter which edge, you could go from this edge to that edge, but if it's the same size hole, it's real easy. You just move it over to whichever edge and then measure to the same edge on the next hole. And then it'll give you a really good measurement onto how far apart they are from center to center. So since the ruler fits inside here and I'm touching this edge and that edge, if you just make sure that the ruler is parallel to the edge of the plate, this is gonna be perfectly centered on this plate. So we can actually just look off of these numbers. So this is a six inch ruler. The three is the center and we want the holes to be an inch and a half from center to center. So you just subtract that by two, which is three quarter and you can actually just move three quarter in both directions. And we're at an inch and a half. It's not a bad idea to check it after you get it. That looks good to me. So this is a one inch plate. It's a little tricky to get in here. This is a one inch plate. I gotta just uh, continue to lay this out to move this line into the center. 
So when I use my square, I like to actually line my scribe up with the edge first before I move it over. And then you got your center, so you're not trying to do it afterwards. And I do the same thing over here. Put it on my mark, then move the square to the edge of my mark, and then I can mark it. And then we're just gonna go to the half inch point because that'll be in the center. And the same thing over here. And then I got, get your center punch. The nicer you lay this kind of stuff out, the nicer everything lines up and how much happier you'll be bolting this thing back together. There's nothing worse than trying to put together, bolt stuff on and bolts are under tension and they're kind of scratching on one side of the plate and not the other. So take your time lining this stuff up. Another nice trick you don't have a scribe, I bet you got some old spokes lying around. If you grind one edge of this, the spokes are pretty hard. You can just spin it around in your bench grinder and then now you got a nice scribe. Now that we got the holes lined up, we're just gonna put the bracket on there to just give it a quick check before we drill this out. And I think everything looks good. Yeah, so we're gonna go with that. So I started off with a small size drill bit, just kind of like a pilot to drill my hole. It made it a little easier just to keep everything centered so it didn't walk around. And then you're gonna wanna step it up. This is a 5 16 hole, so I'm only going once, uh, only one undersized pilot. But when I'm drilling through the plate for the 5 16 bolt, I'm actually going to drill slightly oversized because once this thing's powder coated or painted, if it was an exact size hole, your bolt wouldn't fit. So I'm gonna step it up just to uh, 2164. This is just the next size larger if you have a whole box set of 64th increment drill bits. But I would just make sure to drill a little bit extra. Just the holes are slotted and everything. It doesn't have to be an exact fitment hole. So we're gonna drill this out and then we're gonna bolt this on. So now that the holes are drilled in this plate, we're gonna bolt on the bracket that's going to mount the fender to this plate. And as you can see, I'm using flathead bolts like the rest of the hardware mounting the fender just to center, me, center my holes up. I also will be putting a couple washers underneath this so that after everything's painted, you're not gonna have such a huge surface smooshing your powder coat or your paint over. And you could even tack these to the top if you wanted. So then you have a little space to clean off just around the top of the washer. If you tack these in a couple spots, you could clean the paint off of that area. And then this should bolt really flat, super happy, no smush of powder coat or paint or chipping paint. There's a lot of different ways for you to do some things like that to keep your bike looking really nice for a really long time. It's kind of the same thing as the bungs on the fender. 
when we go to, when I show you later when this bike's actually going back together, we're gonna clean the paint off of that surface. So it's a really nice, just uh, bolts flat, metal to metal, because the sissy bar is gonna be chromed or, yeah, no, that one's gonna be chromed because it's not stainless. And so it'll be, it won't be smushing paint or anything. It'll bolt really nice and flat, metal to metal. So once we get those kind of finger tight, where the bracket's actually sitting flat, we're going to fit this to the fender just to where that bung is sitting pretty nice and flat. I'm not too worried about a little bit of a gap. I can fill, I can fill that kind of gap. If you wanted to grind this back just a little bit so the bottom touches a little bit more, that's fine, that's up to you. I'm not too worried about it. That's not that big of a gap in my opinion. those you want to just make sure that this bracket's pretty square I'll just snap that up these things are going to lock a little i like that that looks pretty good now i got to get my welder over here and we're going to attack this this low mount onto the fender and the fender will be completely mounted. Okay, just make sure everything's tight and then tack this thing on. So I'm going to remove this bracket now that we got this tacked on and I wanted to tack on the washers that I put on there as a spacer. And like I said before, you're using those just as spacers so that your purchase point of this bracket doesn't smush the powder coat or paint. And then you have a nice surface to clean off the powder coat or paint, depending on what you do, uh, so that the two pieces will bolt together nice and flat, metal to metal, because this is a stainless bracket and it won't need to be painted or powder coated. You could bolt it in as is, you could polish it if need be. You don't have to weld these on, but you will have to remember to install them on final assembly or this won't line up exactly the same. The bracket does have a little bit of slot in it, so it should bolt in nicely and give you a little bit of play. But if you did go by my suggestion in using tiny little washers, you're gonna need to put those on when you install that bracket. And I don't really wanna forget, so I'm gonna just tack them to it so I don't have to think about it anymore. These flathead bolts do a nice job of centering everything up. And if there's a little bit of slop in there, it's close enough that it's not going to, like sometimes I'm not actually indicating the center of the hole on the other side with the bolt. Like if it was going into something threaded, it'd be much more accurate. But since it's just a through hole, it's not gonna be, it looks like I got a few funky thread. But since it's got a through hole, it's not gonna be super accurate, but it's gonna be close enough where it's not hanging over on one side to cause you trouble when you're trying to bolt this in later. To do this, we're going to be using, I'm going to be using silicon bronze, which is available at any of the weld shops. It welds a little bit differently than any steel rod. This essentially works kind of like solder. It will melt before the base materials melt. So it's almost like you're uh, kind of gluing this together and not actually melting all the materials so they become one. You melt this and it flows between the two materials. Only needs to hold the washers to the material while this thing's getting painted and stuff and not really anything structural. This is more than enough to bolt it on. And I use this in a lot of applications such as this. And you just have to warm up the two materials and then you can just dab it right on top. And it works really great for stuff like this.
Silicon bronze works really nice over any kind of zinc material like this washer, because since I'm not actually melting the material, it doesn't it doesn't react with the zinc because if you weld on a zinc bolt or washer or nut or anything like that, you've seen that it changes the color, the thing likes to spit back at you and cause a lot of porosity and you're grinding your tungsten a lot. Well, you won't have that if you use the silicon bronze. If you think it'd be a good idea to just leave your fender hanging down low, look at that. This is just tapping on it. Think about if your bike's running. I have seen a lot of people do this before. This is the importance of mounting your fender tight down in the low spot. So now that this is on there, I'm just gonna reassemble everything. I would get this one pretty tight first, just so the materials are sitting flat with each other. Maybe a little bit of play. Make sure everything's still straight. Yeah. I was looking from the back just from before, making sure the edges of the fender looks nice with the tire from the sidewall to the inside of the fender. And everything still lines up really nice from how we were looking before. And so the fender's mounted. Uh, I would still probably wait until the end to weld everything up. I usually like to leave everything tacked just in case you wanna change something it's much easier to do it now than if it was fully welded. Things change, you might put a different fender on this, who knows? Because projects just get different over time and it's fun to make changes while you're building it. You might notice something different down the road. So I usually like to leave them tacked and then we get the whole bike fit up and then we fully weld it. So let's move on to the next thing.